Praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you and I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As always, I am very, very happy, privileged and uh, honored. Um, today is going to be the last session in this episode um, where we are talking through the subject Agape Love of God. Agape Love of God is immeasurable, unimaginable. It is beyond our imagination is beyond anything that you could think, you know. Um, for example, for some people, you know, mother's love, there is nothing that is equivalent to that love. Yes, true. But then that's not even one trillionth of what agape love of God is all about. And we had been discussing this for quite a long time. Um, this is our fifth episode. Um, close to... 70 to 80 hours of teachings are available in our playlist and the reason why we are getting into the details or the detailed study on this agape love is the more you understand the agape love of God the more you will hate sin it's not that you will run away from sin or find ways to handle sin and sinful deeds but you will hate sin the reason is because you will understand how much God loved you that he sent his only son on the to the cross uh, upon whom all the sins of the world from the beginning were cast. And this was always um, in the heart of God that uh, he needs to bring the mankind towards salvation. He needs to set right the sinful deeds which entered into this world through the first Adam, right? He has fallen. First Adam had fallen and sin entered into this world, isn't it? And therefore, our God is very, very attentive and uh, concerned that the mankind can never live in this kind of curse, you know, because sin brings curse. Wages of sin is death. Death means what? You're spiritually dead and then Obviously, you, you, all of us are going to be dead and gone. But when you are spiritually dead, you are already have started to live um, the life in curse. That's the beginning, right? That's the beginning of your cursed life on earth. And that's why it's very, very important for all of us to understand the consequences of living this life in curse. Good example, Ephesians, sorry, get Genesis chapter 3 and 4, you take and read. You will see that Adam and Eve had lost that privilege, all dominion given into their hands to rule over all the creations of God. They lost that privilege. And every, every single um, creation of God were subjected to their feet. They had the powers, but all the powers had been transferred to the demon or demons. Right, and that's the reason you will see the curse continues in their in the life of their son Cain. He murdered his brother. How? Because of the curse that entered uh, on the day when Adam had fallen, Eve had fallen. And God our Father always, always is concerned that He would never ever allow the mankind to continue live their lives like these, uh, like this. And that's the reason why God our Father chose to um, send His only begotten Son who had shed His precious blood on the cross of Calvary. And uh, that blood not only broke the curse, but it also ensured that the curse delivered the people of God from every sin and every repercussion. The consequences of the sin is nothing but curse of the past is also nullified. That's why you see in many families there are generational curses such as what? The child will be born lame or yeah, for four or five generations you will see or maybe all of them. I know a very famous uh, movie actor, his name is Sanjeev Kumar. He died long ago. Uh, those days I used to watch a lot of movies <laughs> and then God really, really delivered me. And especially this actor, 
when i say a lot of movies i don't get into the habit of was- watching all nasty movies sitting and watching wasting my time i hand pick but even that is not right i, I don't have time to waste <laughs> you know i don't know how people can sit before that idiot box 3 hours and watch a movie and with their popcorns and then you go to doctor how oh, my cholesterol is high and my bp is low and whatever right okay they're all pretending how oh, what are you talking about brother movies huh? i don't know what this what is the spelling of this word movie huh okay fine may it be so if that is the truth then i'm very very happy for you okay now <laughs> now there was a little joke try to smile okay or laugh now what i was telling yeah i was telling something about this uh, sanjeev kumar the fellow died at the age of 45 and he had a terrible heart problem one of the prominent actors one of the movie he acted i wept actually he was uh, what is the he was deaf and dumb and they have have a, they beget a children uh, they beget a child and they bring it bring a very emotional movie nice movie uh, i forgot the name and i love that actor because his movies are all like that very very nice to watch and the guy died and i learned his brother also died like that and i learned his elder brother two elder brothers died like that and his father died like that it was a generational curse on that family yeah it's it's not about the movies or movie actor i'm just taking one example you want to research in the google i I'm, i'm sure you know many many people like these right um and bible promises that in the name of jesus there is no witchcraft there is no sorcery there is no black magic there is no curse of the past that, that could linger to you that could even near you why because the name of jesus not only has the might and authority but the blood of jesus purchased you and me for a price shedding his blood he purchased you and me for a price and bible says in 1 corinthians 6:20 therefore we are his property yeah i mean that in the niv translation i think we we are his property we belong to him our body belongs to him nkjv version says that means you you stop saying that you know i decided like that i thought like this my body my home and my car and all that your body itself doesn't belong how about the belongings uh, you know how, how could you say that the belongings belong to you first of all you don't belong to yourself you belong to god then how dare <laughs> you and i always work against the will of god become adversaries to god reject the love of god insult the holy spirit insult the blood covenant treat the blood of jesus so cheaply ah brother no no we never do like this each time you sin this is exactly what you're doing brother you're spitting on the face of jesus you're ripping him of his beard you are stripping him naked you are the one who crucified him and jesus had to hang on the cross for six and a half hours roughly Nine o'clock in the morning, he was hung. This is this is Lenten season, no? All of you go to the church on for Good Friday. Next week, Friday is Good Friday. Uh, Good Friday comes year after year. What? In this pandemic situation, this is the third uh, Resurrection Sunday and uh, Good Friday in a row. And uh, you will you will see so many Good Fridays. But you know what? If you are a true Christian, you will you will definitely remember Good Fridays. Every day will be your Good Friday. every day you will remember the birth of jesus thank him for his name thank him for his glorious name every day you will remember the crucifixion on the cross every day you will remember the resurrection uh, in whose name there is power in whose name there is glory in whose name there is victory 1 corinthians 15 57 second corinthians chapter 5 verses 1 to 10 you read blessed assurance in the resurrection name or resurrected name of jesus in the resurrection power of jesus <coughs> why am i telling all this i'll tell you what without the agape love that is unconditional unimaginable irrevocable unchangeable huh there is no way that you would have acquired all of these <laughs> yeah that love which you, you and i could no way repay can you imagine this that you and i were to get to the cross and shed the blood fine many people died like idiot not for, sorry not use that word many no, forget people right many believers they died as martyrs and most of them were crucified including our dear beloved paul uh, sorry peter apostle peter who was crucified upside down yet he says you know why he was crucified upside down upside down he says do not crucify me like jesus no way i even deserve to what to say 
uh, repeat the way how my Jesus was crucified. No way, I don't even deserve to repeat that method in in how in the way how Jesus was crucified. Crucify me upside down. Why? Because it's not worthy even to repeat the method. That means what? Your blood cannot sanctify anyone. That blood without blemish, the holy blood, the blood of sanctification, the blood of consecration, the blood which is holy without blemish. Bible says in 1 Peter 1:18, 1, 1 Peter 3:18, 19. Ah, uh, he was spotless. How many of you are with me? You understand the agape love? Agape love is tightly coupled to the cross. And each day you go to meditate cross. The more you meditate cross, you understand the love of God. And that's enough. You, do, you will never run away from sin. You will never be fearful of any kind of threats, any kind of problems, any kind of intimidations that the devil brings to you. Yeah, that's his job. He does his job. Why are you cursing the devil? You'll be angry at yourself. Huh? Because you have not fallen in line with the doctrines of God and therefore the problem is with you and not with the devil come on let's have some maturity hmm? and this is why many many Christians are still living their lives in defeat in failure yeah and in frustrations and they end up in depression what a shame right can any Christian say that I'm depressed I don't know how to overcome. Bible is full of promises and laws and commandments that takes you towards one thing that is overcomer. You will be an overcomer. You will become an overcomer. <laughs> and how can you say that I don't know how to overcome? I don't know how to handle my problem. I don't know how to manage this situation. I don't know how to resist the devil. I do not know how to uh, you know, be victorious in life. Anything that I do, it's always defeat and failure. How? Because you just now told, no. That is your belief, brother. That is your confession. That, um, that's not what Bible says. It's not what you said against the Bible, which means what? You have insulted the blood covenant. See, anything you, you speak reverse against the Bible, many people don't understand the consequence. You know what it actually means? You're cursing God and you're calling him a liar. This book of truth, this, book, this gospel, the holy book of God is the book of lies. This is exactly what you're telling. Each time you say that, I'm helping brother, let, let, let's see how the situation is going to change. You're calling God a liar. <laughs> you get into fasting and prayer and you come out, out of the room three hours. So what is your what do you think and all that? Somebody asks. Let's see, I prayed, I did my job. Now it's up to God. <laughs> you have nullified your prayer time. That's it. That's all I can say. You have nullified, you're nullified, and the devil is really happy about this because that's exactly what he wants. It's not about the confessions through the word of your mouth, but it's about the belief in your heart. This is our last session, therefore I am doing one last time the recap on this agape love. Yeah? And especially we are doing this categorical study and this category is about loving your enemy. Yeah? As, how, as much as how it's, it becomes easier for you to <clears throat> resist the devil and overcome, <clears throat> excuse me, overcome temptations and uh, come out of those defe defeats and failures and all that, it becomes your life will become your, sorry your life your life will be very easy your attitude will be so so easy mellow down to even practice some of the toughest doctrines like love your enemies it may sound so cool you know <laughs> love your enemies yes i love all enemies you know really but in the midst of circumstance and situation just forget everything huh? take your car and just drive from one end to the other end in the city of bangalore and let's see you don't get angry even. I'm telling you from one end to the other end means what? From northern Bangalore to the southern Bangalore end. And then you come back from southern Bangalore end to the northern Bangalore. I've been doing this for almost seven years. Trust me. Ah, brother, then you never got into road rage. Who said that? I was an idiot that God warned me many times in my heart. I never listened. Then he permitted one accident. Did not listen. Then he permitted a little uh, terrible accident. I Luckily, no one got killed huh? But it was, it was a terrible incident. And after that, I stopped driving. God said, hey, you follow the rules, then you enjoy the blessings. You don't follow the rules. I was cursed for seven months. I ran like a dog in the, <laughs> on the streets. I used to drive my own car, very nice car God gave me. And I was enjoying a very nice automatic car he gave me. But what happened? God uh, permitted the second time accident and he instilled that fear. And I lost the confidence to drive. At least to office, I don't drive. Then I had to take uh, the tra public transportation, sitting with all people and all that. One guy will be leaning on me, other guy will be pushing me, and there will be pickpocketers, this and that. 
and then i used to go on a sharing cab and this and that ah i struggled god taught me a very good lesson why all this happened tell me the rage in my heart counting everybody as enemy i am telling you this you you try doing that then you will understand what it is huh? Huh? for 7 years that too it's not easy but i don't call it as a reason for excuse huh? i was bad i was wrong then i repent and i ask god please give me a solution and god brings pandemic situation and he gave me work from home for two and a half years <laughs> now they opened up offices i can just show up at office once in a month or something like that all right need not even go it's like a hybrid work model you see how god changes when you i'm not saying pandemic was good huh? but i'm telling you at least one of my prayers got answered that i you know i really really struggled huh, with this public transportation i used to get up early in the morning 7 a.m and uh, start my transport uh, this thing and come back home at 6 p.m in the evening my goodness dead tired traveling for four and a half hours five hours in the bus my god god delivered me but then what was the root cause huh? i count all people as my enemies adversaries road rage one example i'm telling you right like that you know many people don't even understand this road rage is what what is it all about building enmity you're angry at somebody you're calling him as your adversary yeah if lord doesn't judge you or oh, you're ready to even stone him to death or thrash him and throw him out of the road get out of my way because you know i don't want to finger point at anyone especially the two wheeler fellows my goodness they just take the brains and they throw it at home and they it's almost like brainless and reckless driving they don't care they just don't care and they blame it on four wheeler why because you have a bigger vehicle no they don't care and such an incident i got into now could even even then also could i uh, could i look at that fellow who was absolutely wrong for and cause for that incident accident uh, that you are you are at fault and not me and all that no i cannot bible doesn't permit me to do that bible says you got to love him you got to forgive him you got to embrace him you got to pay for his loss although he was at fault i'll tell you what you will be able to practice these kind of doctrines embrace these kind of doctrines so very easily if you are understood that god actually you know treats us this way every single day your relationship with god if you if you if you thoroughly analyze you will understand that god looks at it, looks at every one of us this way that we are all defaulters some or by some or other means through some or other ways we all have fallen short of glory uh, yet he loves us although we are adversaries technically to be called as his adversaries correct no how many of you are with me eh? you are all pretending as if you have never heard any of this before come on uh, you don't know what is road rage you don't know what is to fight and quarrel with your neighbor you don't know what it is to throw tantrums and heresies against your mother in law Uh, same for mother in law towards daughter in law uh, you you don't know what it is to fight the husbands and wife huh they're all behaving sitting like angels in the church but after that what happens only you know the secret now you remember your honeymoon period yeah now after that what happens couple of weeks later and then a month later a year later and 10 years later you know the truth right to some people they don't need any other adversaries wife is adversary to husband husband is an adversary to wife anyway i don't want to get into those matters 1 corinthians 7 law of marriage you read and judge who you are okay now today is our last session and i will be taking you through this 1 samuel chapter 24 verses uh, 4 to 13 is what i would like to discuss we will be going through that but just to give you a little bit of background david was a old covenant person all of us know this but david had seen enough of messiah in his visions and dreams and revelations where prophecies and prophecies were given to him psalms 22 david wrote and he was able to even see the suffering of jesus and he had that uh, tight encounter uh, with jesus and all that he is going through going to go through Uh, for the mankind uh, he had enough revelation on these lines uh, so uh, not to be taken completely as a old covenant person because he also got revelation on new covenant but he still a old covenant person why because he never um, got a chance to listen to the preachings and teachings of our lord jesus those 1015 new testament laws and commandments were hidden from his eyes and that's why he still to be called as a old covenant person yet since he understood the 
name of Jesus, since he understood the Messiah's regime, he understood the Messiah's suffering, uh, he always had this practice of consulting God the Father. Without inquiring God, he would never ever proceed with his own decisions. No, he hates to do that. He would always ask God, you tell me God, should I go up? And, and you know what? His track record says he has not last, lost a single battle. David, he fought all the battles and he led Israel to victory. Always. What, what, what got him that? Because he had the tremendous intimacy, not only that respect and fear for God, but intimacy and his understanding about his love, which will never allow him to death, which will never lead him to failure. My God is always faithful because why he loves me so much. And this David, before he became king, you see that um, he goes through, he, he from his birth, he had tough time. I don't know how many of you know, Psalm 69 is about about Saul, um, sorry about King uh, David's uh, harassment as a little boy how he was harassed there is a little story um, I have also preached about this it's in our playlist his father was married to a lady um, who have fallen in the tribe of um, I forgot exactly the tribe it's it was not the tribe of no not sorry sorry not in the tri not in the not in the tribe um, uh, yeah, she belongs to the tribe of Israel, but then this guy uh, is the son of, uh, uh, grandson of uh, Boaz, who? Jesse. Now, he was one of the prominent person in the um, uh, Jewish synagogue. And uh, everybody were speaking about his grandma, Boaz's wife. Hmm? Who's Boaz's wife? Ruth, no? All of us know Ruth, right? Navami, Ruth. Naomi is the Naomi is, uh, is none other than Ruth's uh, uh, mother-in-law. All the story we know. And uh, Boaz got married, and Ruth is a Moabite, and uh, they are not supposed to marry. But he got married, and then she accepted the king of Israel. The, sorry, the Lord of Israel, and all that. But still, this was like a blemish. So in order to get rid of this blemish, David's mother, he wants to divorce her saying that, that the baby in her womb doesn't belong to me. Therefore, he could show people that how much he respects the law. So he throws tantrums and heresies on the lady. Is that right? No. And uh, finally, what happened is, uh, to cut the long story short, um, David is begotten. And uh, the whole world looks at David and... Um, as, a, as a person who was born for a different father, uh, illegitimate child, and he grows up in the same house of Jesse. That's why when Samuel walks into the house of Jesse, it's not that he has forgotten David, but David was not even counted as one of his sons. And all his brothers, they call him as dog or something like that. He was not allowed to come and sit with them. That's Psalm 69. Now, all his sufferings he would have written there. That's why he was, he was sent to take care of the sheep, shepherd boy. And Jesse was one of the very richest man. He had so many shepherds. Can you imagine his own son being being given that role of uh, that shepherd boy, which means he hates him to death. And that, that's, that too, he sends him into wilderness. And he ended up fighting with bears and lions. And yet God protected him. Why? Because somehow let this guy get killed. I don't want to kill him because his blood will be in my hands and curse will follow my generation. Like that, you know. This was his background, Psalm 69. Very, very terrible beginning for uh, David. Huh? Not at all easy for him to, uh, as a little boy. And not only that, uh, they, will, they, will, they will speak some lies. In Psalm 69, you read all of this is explained. Yeah, we, we, sent, we sent 100 sheep along with you. Now only 99 is there. Where is that one sheep? No, David would say, no, I don't know. You sent me only 90. You gave me only 99 sheep and all that. No, they would say, no. And they will punish him, making him to drink that substance, chemical substance, gal. Which, will, uh, which was actually mixed in the vine, uh, wine and given to Jesus while he was hanging. A huh? lot of similarities. And that will cause a lot of numbness in the body, plus it will create a lot of bitterness in the stomach, stomach ache. It's a punishment. And they will make him drink that gal, mixing in the food and all that. And some of this guy will run away from the house, but he did not go anywhere because he doesn't want to lose that inheritance, that blessing. Right, as 
so much he loved the god of israel and that's what that's what he used to uh, do uh, sitting in the wilderness uh, you know taking care of the sheep and all that and he used to sing songs and psalms praising god can you imagine this is how david grew up and god chose him now this david when he was anointed um by uh, samuel he becomes adversary to saul this is how the devil builds builds that enmity uh in the minds of uh, there would be a very close friend to you but then all of a sudden he becomes your enemy how it happens because some demons have occupied and uh, they always would come to fight against you such was the problem with uh, saul uh, an evil spirit caught over him and um, he couldn't uh, tolerate that david is going to replace him and all that and he became his adversary that's what bible says um but then david never looked at him as his enemy although david had a very very rough start all through his life that's why david died at the age of 70 actually he has fallen sick at the age of 55 or 56 he ended up with bone cancer so many battles he fought so much of depression so much of tension friction yet my goodness what an achievement from the age of 62 or something like that he was bedridden almost he couldn't do anything much and after 65 i think he was completely bedridden he doesn't even know what's happening around him and uh, in that short span of time david did so much for the lord and uh, the children of israel his achievements are something that nobody can reach the track record why because of his attitude he never ever um would violate the laws and commandments of god because he loved god so much therefore he loved his laws and commandments although it is very tough to follow at times like for example is this what we are going to deal with right now you got the background now saul hates him to death why because bunch of demons have occupied him bunch of evil spirits have uh, possessed him and then therefore he is always after uh, david and the dev- demons know for sure in the line bloodline of david jesus is going to be born that's the important thing huh? and uh, god god promises in your in your in your uh, what to say in your birth li- in your uh, what to say in your bloodline uh, messiah will be born and therefore he wants to destroy david that's the whole point but then david you see how he handles saul and he never counts him as his adversary there comes an incident uh, actually saul was always after david not once twice many many times but each time god makes a way for him to escape and because of uh, because of him many people get killed also once he was getting into the temple and uh, some uh, you know what that priest gave him the bread and somebody told he offered him bread uh, to bread to david and all that and uh, saul comes and kills all the priests the temple priests because of david many people get killed god even permits it but spares uh, david and uh, you know makes a way for him to escape but still david okay can you imagine he had every reason to be angry at saul and anyway he was a man of god and anyway god had handed over saul into his hands but you see how he handles the situation although being an old covenant person being born and brought up under, under a lot of depression and involved in a lot of depression and pressure in life verse number 4 then the men of david said to him this is the day see uh, verse number 3 i will So he came to the sheep folds uh, by the road where there was a cave and Saul went in to uh, attend to his needs David and uh, David and his men were staying in the recess of the cave then the men of David said to him this is the day of which Lord said to you behold I will deliver your enemy into your hand that you may do to him as it seems good to you good to you and David arose and secretly cut off a corner of Saul's robe uh Saul was in other words in chronicles you may read comfortably relaxing in the cave and God brought a deep sleep on all his uh, bodyguards and all of them were sleeping now that was the best chance uh, for David to take revenge and one of his uh, one of David's uh, servants is telling one one knock right on his uh, chest you know with my spear and second time I don't have to strike him just give me the privilege to kill your enemy David David says no i will not lay my hand against the anointed servant of god what a what a what a attitude you know um, you know how much he loves god and his anointing although the guy who received anointing of god became his adversary now there is no anointing of god in him 
and he has become even god's adversary and only the demons have possessed him there is every reason for david to take revenge on this guy and kill him thrash him into pieces why because anointing of god anyway left him but then he remembers once upon a time the anointing of god was dwelling in this guy's body it's not about saul it's not about his attitude it's not about his body but god's anointing once upon a time was dwelling in this body therefore i will respect that <laughs> Yeah, can you imagine? You really call him an old covenant person. Huh? I don't think even the new covenant guys have this kind of attitude like, towards their adversaries. Therefore, he spares Saul. He decides, forget it, man. I'm not going to touch him. How many of us today, listening to this sermon, huh, have this kind of attitude towards your enemy? Whether Christians or non-Christians, it doesn't matter. But as a new covenant person, all of you, all of your neighbors, you will love as much you love yourself is what bible says in 22 39 matthew huh? which simply means you have to love all the mankind mankind means men and women only but then the creations of god how many of you you know disagree with me that some people were created by devil devil is not a creator he is a destroyer god is the creator and he alone is the creator and he creates every human being and he sends them to this world into their mother's womb uh, being created in the image of God. It's, it's, it's just that the mankind made a choice to reject God, but God never rejects them. Why? Because he loves them. He creates them. He's their father. Yeah. And uh, being a new covenant person, shame on us that we don't even reach to the standard of David, being an old covenant person, not to the standard of Job, old covenant person. Then the men of David said to him, this is the day. Now, I, it happened afterward that David's heart troubled him because he had cut Saul's robe. That's the point. I'm reading from 1 Samuel 24, 5. David did not touch his body. He did not kill him. He cut the robe. And even that also pricked his heart. How could I even touch his dress? Robe. A robe means that big robe. Shawl. Uh, sorry, man. Um, the robe means robe only, right? It's like, you know, right? The olden days, how they dress up. Big robe. Uh, that too, only that corner he cut it. And I will tell you the reason why he did that. And he said to his men, the Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my master. The Lord's anointed. The Lord's anointed. Anointing of God was in him to stretch out my hand against him. Seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David restrained his servants with his words and did not allow them to rise against Saul. And Saul got up from the cave and went on his way. David also arose afterward, went out of the cave and called out to Saul saying, My Lord, the king. You see the respect. Huh? The respect is to Saul. No, actually speaking, the respect is to God. God anointed him. God appointed him. How many of you respect the politicians, the ministers? Chief Minister, Prime Minister, you use all nasty language and curse them. I'll tell you what, the curse doesn't go and rest on their heads. That's between them and God. If they're corrupt, God will deal with them. That's different. But that curse will come to you. Why? Because actually they are anointed servants of God. God only appoints the government officers. God only appoints the ministers. Upon whose shoulders the government of the worlds are running. Uh, sorry, the government of the nations are running. I see a 9-6, right? That means what? You're not insulting a prime minister. You're not insulting a chief minister or the president of yours. You're insulting God who appointed. God only appoints. Where do you learn this? You learn from here. Look at him. Anointed servant, my lord, my the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth. See, he stooped his face. He's, he's falling prostrately before the king, showing that respect from a distance. Because if he's close by now, he will kill him anyway. And bow down. <laughs> the guy who was after his life, God handed him over. And God never said anything. You should kill or you should not kill. Just God creates this incident that today you and I can learn a lesson from this incident. Huh? Not only the humility, but look at that respect that David had for God's anointing. And imagine how much you would have that respect for God. Huh? <laughs> God's anointing rested on a man and that man became an adversary to God and to him. There is no reason that he should spare his life. But he he just couldn't, couldn't do anything against uh, his conscience. His conscience says, hey, once upon a time the anointing was on him. And even that day I will remember. Huh? 
and even that period time frame i will remember huh? i will not raise my little finger against this guy he stoops down and pays it respect ha huh? and david said to saul why do you listen to the words of men who say indeed david seeks your harm look this day your eyes have seen that the lord delivered you today into my hand in the cave and someone urged me to kill you but my eyes spared you and i said i will not stretch out my hand against my lord for he is the lord's anointed again he repeats lord's anointed moreover likewise new testament new covenant people he is god's child who that guy who induced that road rage in your heart that neighbor fellow uh, who had uh, thrown all garbage into your compound uh, he is god's anointed now you don't have to say god's anointed he is you can say definitely obviously you can say that he is god's child uh, he is a creation of god he is my brother he is my sister she is my sister and i will not raise my little finger i will forgive him i will be long suffering you know uh, sorry i will go through long suffering i'll be tolerant enough now i'm just translating how a new covenant christian should behave in in reference to how a old covenant david behaved against his adversary moreover my father see you see the corner of your robe in my hand eh? for in that i cut off the corner of your robe and did not kill you uh, no and see that there is neither evil nor rebellion in my hand and i have not sinned against you yet you hunt my life to take it huh is it is it fair this is what he's asked let the lord judge between you and me and let the lord avenge me on you but my hand shall not be against you i will not do a thing the important principle you have to learn is fine you're forgiven but you are hurt you're insulted you feel humiliated you can obviously walk to god and tell i'm hurt i'm humiliated but it's between you and him i will not raise my little finger neither will i urge you some people you know they misunderstand this they will urge god i am not going to fight against him but you fight against him you kill him you i demand uh, your justice over this enemy of mine and all that that's old covenant prayer i'm telling you it's between you and him father on the white throne judgment day you would judge him but still i'm asking you i'm requesting you i'm pleading you i'm urging you to forgive him therefore he could become like you he is your child he shouldn't remain in this attitude forever deliver him you you will pray over his deliverance you will pray over his salvation this is new covenant prayer old covenant ah oh, god will avenge you see this is how david although he was right right from the old covenant perspective this is the perfect prayer may god avenge you but old new covenant people cannot even make that statement may god avenge the demons uh, that have occupied my brother's body <laughs> brother's soul my brother's heart my brother's mindset and in the name of jesus i cast out those evil spirits that made my brother to fight against me ha huh? this is how you will pray for your neighbor you understand huh? you walk into your room and then you cry see how insulted i am you have every right to do that even i also sob like anything before god but then your fight is against the demons not against the blood and flesh huh? principalities and powers of darknesses your fight is against those even evil forces huh? Ephesians 6:12 Therefore you will your war is against the demons but not against your brother but you will fight obviously a fight is imminent yeah you will ask god to avenge the evil spirit and deliver my brother may we be friends may we become brothers again may we learn to love each other may my brother be delivered but david doesn't know how to pray like this because he had not heard jesus today you and i have heard jesus and how are we able to um, you know forget about uh, behaving like a new covenant we don't even behave like an old covenant david huh? look at him he got a chance but he did not deliver uh, him to his uh, soldiers and his soldiers would have really chopped him off and lastly uh, verse number 13 as the proverb of the ancient says wickedness proceeds from the wicked but my hand shall not be against you with that we end this uh, episode number 5 wickedness proceeds from the wicked and i have nothing to do with this demons and demonic attitude and demonic forces and uh, uh, demonic practices and uh, i have i have known many christians even go to sorcerers and they are involved in black magics against their brothers in the church can you believe this you're not able to believe i personally know <laughs> 
anyway i don't want to give glory to those black magicians and all that forget it there is no sorcery or black magic against uh, israel Ch we are all children of israel mm. although we are gentiles we got a privilege we are descendants of abraham technically speaking numbers 23 23 you're all with me huh? i hope you learned something today not only today this is our um, i am not sure this is our 20th session i think right and uh, 20 or 21st session and i would strongly recommend please go through these teachings multiple times sometimes you know you don't understand or you have not focused enough or you understood and then you don't know how to practice that's why we are giving you clear guidance practical illustrations how you could practice this and become like jesus why i should become like jesus only then you have a chance that too you have a slim chance entering into the kingdom of heaven never ever think you took water baptism and you accept the name of jesus on on that day what 20 years ago and like a passport you 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 get a flight that will, will take you all the way to the kingdom of heaven nothing like that after that only the real battle starts every single day is like spiritual warfare christian life is walking in the battlefield battlefield arrows will fly spears will fly bombings will happen huh? aircrafts will drop missiles you still have to survive find ways to survive why because you have to defeat your enemy and christian life is going to be like that warfare spiritual warfare it's like battlefield for how long until your last breath i mean to say this for sure not telling you a lie here right there is no need for me to tell uh, speak some lies no i'm telling you the truth therefore learn to be an overcomer and these are the teachings where uh, which helps you enables you to be an overcomer may god bless us heavenly father we want to thank you for this series god and for this episode number 5 where we had I learned enough how to love our enemies and how to treat them with respect and how to pray for them as a new covenant person it's not by force but by choice we want to love why because only then be a reflection of christ uh, we we reflect the love of christ in us help us lord help my brother and help us, help my sisters in jesus name we pray amen God bless you subscribe to our channel get access to all our playlists do not miss on any videos notifications share it with your friends relatives everyone whom you know target one soul per day that's enough uh, yeah and uh, continue to remember me and our ministries in your personal prayers daily prayers pray for me 10 seconds every day and may god bless all of us and uh, i will meet you soon in a different uh, series um, and this series agape love is not finished huh? this is a categorical study Uh, just keep your fingers crossed i will come and meet you in episode number 6 where we'll be dealing with another section like this and we'll get into a detailed study uh, all right god bless you take care thank you for your time